Hello, welcome to what I'm calling armchair maintenance. And to clarify that, no, it's not going to be about maintaining these armchairs. What it is, it's going to be a video about how to properly go about doing the maintenance on the doors in the event that something goes wrong. And it's mainly geared towards the type of people that will actually be doing the maintenance or inspection upon those doors. This is brought to you by a Hangers West Condominium Complex, which is the group of hangers from which I do most of the maintenance on. So with that, and without further ado, we're going to move right into one of the first areas that creates one of the largest problems with these hanger doors. So moving right into the largest area that causes problems, and that's the cables. You have to understand that most of these cables are more than 35 years old. They have a lifespan and most of which they have already reached their lifespan. So dealing with the cables is something that's of great importance to the person that's either doing maintenance or doing the inspections. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into what is a fractured cable, what's a frayed cable, what is a cable that actually needs to be replaced. Because these cables are the only thing allowing you to raise your door or lower your door in a safe manner. So with that we're going to move into some of the areas that you're going to be looking for uh, when you're actually looking at cables. So moving right into cables. Cables seem to be the area where most of the problems arise with these hanger doors. Understanding whether a cable is too tight or too loose becomes a critical aspect of being able to do the proper maintenance on these doors. One of the first areas that we move into is cable tension. You move along your cables, pulling on each of the cables, determining whether they're tight or loose. This becomes a real balancing act as to understanding how tight they should be or how loose they shouldn't be. And that's gained through experience of working with these cables. But basically, we'll go through how to adjust these cables, how to look for cables that are too loose, and how to look for cables that may possibly be too tight. And from there, we're going to move into what actually is a bad cable. You're going to see cables given in the descriptions here and in the, in the pictures that you're going to see that are either fracturing in half or they're starting to unwind due to their, again, their age, or they're actually splintering, which is another process that's kind of difficult to determine unless you actually physically have your hands on the cables. And it's important to note that when you do this, you do it with gloves on. If you don't do it with the gloves on, you'll only do it once, sliding your hands down on a cable and all of a sudden you realize that now you've encountered some of those splintered threads of the cable and they will cut and they will hurt. So it's very important when you do that type of inspection is you have a good pair of heavy leather gloves on. Because even with the leather gloves, if they are starting to unwind like that, you will be able to catch on the leather, uh, which is an indication that the cable is actually starting to go bad. So with that, we'll dive into some of the pictures here and do some descriptions on what are bad cables. So let's talk about loose cables and the problems that they create. It's very important when you're determining tension on a cable to make sure that the kickouts or the breakover devices are in place properly so that when you're actually pulling on the cable, the cable is set to its proper tension. Or if it's getting loose, you'll be able to determine that. But it's very important that these kickout devices are in place when you're doing your cable tension checking. So let's talk about some of the issues with loose cables. One of the major issues with loose cables is misalignment in tracking on the drive drum. Because the cables are loose, they have a tendency to wander and they're going to go where they want. In some cases they stack up on themselves, in other cases they'll actually jump over onto the opposite cable that's winding up and then that creates a real mess. And it also puts unequal pressure on other than the rest of the cables that might be winding properly. So that's an important thing to look for, to make sure that if the cables are loose, you have to decide what's causing the problem in making the cables loose. Are the cables old? Are they worn out? Have they stretched beyond their capacity? So these are things that you're looking for when you're looking at cables when, with regards to actual cable tension. So with that, uh, we'll move into some of the issues 
associated with that, in particular what happens when these cables actually do that and they start winding in the wrong direction or stacking up on the drive spool or in some cases they just actually fracture. So since we're talking about loose cables, when you do the actual cable inspection of one or however many cables seem to be too loose, it's important also to note that if the cables are in okay condition, there are ways to be able to retension that cable. And one of the ways, and obviously there again is with the doors closed, because you can't do it with the door up, is what you'll do is down where the cable attaches the base of the door, there's two U-bolts that actually tighten the cable to the base of the door. What you can do is you unloosen those cable nuts or those U-bolt nuts and then you grasp the loose end of the cable and you pull up until you feel a good solid resistance and at the same time then you go ahead and tighten your U-bolts back down. By doing that then you can recheck your tension there again with the over breakover devices in place and check your tension that way. And if you get a, a significant amount of of resistance or a better way of doing it is actually with a fish scale because you get more uniformity across your cables. So you just hook the fish scale into the cable, pull on it, see what kind of resistance you're getting. And you do that through all of those cables and you'll actually have uniformity within the cables themselves. So that's a simple way of dealing with a cable that might be loose because they're again, they all stretch. New cables are going to stretch as well as the old cables are going to stretch. Actually new cables will stretch more than some of the old ones. So that it's really important that when you put a new cable in understanding that at some point you're going to have to come back and check the stretch of that cable because it may well loosen up. So there again, if the cable is in good condition and it's just loose, it's a very simple method as to how to correct that problem. Undo your U-bolt nuts, pull your cable up, pull the loose part up, tighten the nuts back up, and you should be good to go. So we've talked briefly about cable tensioning, how to solve that issue. But now we'll talk about inspecting each individual cable. Now it's up to you or it's your choice how you want to start. You can either start at the bottom attach point on the bottom of the door and then work your way all the way up to the drive through the pulley systems to the drive spool themselves. It doesn't matter. You can start at the top and work your way down, which actually sometimes is a better way to do it because at the same time you start looking and getting a picture of what that drive spool looks like and things that you might later on you're going to have to be looking at as well in the inspection process. So let's look at some of the things that you're going to see with bad cables. One of the most obvious from a tension point of view, in other words these cables have finally reached their maximum tension and they start to unravel. And what they look like is kind of a spiral effect that you'll see here in the picture. And that is a cable that is just definitely needs to be replaced. It's met its lifespan and it's coming apart. It's stretching and like I said, you'll see it in a spiral sort of fashion. All right? The next one is the actual cable fracture, where you'll see the inside of the cable starting to come out through the outside sheath. That's another really bad sign. That cable needs to be replaced as well. Then there's other ways where you start to see what we talked about before, which you find out uh, when you're running your hands up and down the cable with leather gloves on is you start to feel those small threads starting to break. Any of those type of indications mean that that cable is going bad and needs to be replaced. So the next issue we'll touch on is, okay, how do we replace one of these cables? It's actually a fairly easy process, but we'll go through that so that you don't accidentally wind the cable on the wrong way on the drum, which can really create mess, especially if you have to start the door and the cable's wound on the drum the wrong direction. So we'll look at that, through the pictures, we'll see what it looks like in the right direction, and then we'll move on into actually replacing the cable. Okay, so you've done your cable inspection and determined that some of these cables, whether at one or all, need to be replaced. So it's really important to understand that on the four cable systems, such as in the green hangers with Hangers West Complex, these cables are smaller than a two cable system, which we'll find on some of the other doors. So, Replacing the cable, make sure that you're replacing it with the right size diameter cable, not another size that's too big or another size that's too small. These cables are available usually through Wood River Welding down in Bellevue, or you can get them from Boise Rigging in Boise, Idaho, and they are actually the ones that make up the cables for Wood River Welding in Bellevue. So once again, make sure that you're going to get the proper size, proper diameter size cable to replace 
an older fractured cable with. Then when you get to the point where you actually have the cable and you're ready to put a new cable in, it's really important at that point, obviously the door is down, it's not going to be done in the up position. It's really important to look at the old cable and how it is actually attached to the drive drum itself. Because if you put it in backwards, and then you tighten it all up and you start the hanger door to go up, you're going to fracture that brand new cable and you're going to ruin it. So it's really important. Look at how it's the old cable is actually threaded into the drive spool. And make sure that when you push that back out, you follow the exact route back in with the new cable. Once that's accomplished, you usually make one or two wraps there again, depending upon the system. And then you'll come out and very simply go through your pulley systems down to the bottom of the door attachment, and then you'll do your retention. So that's not real difficult, but it's, there are certain key points there that you have to understand where you can screw up. So there again, don't cut away your old cable until you understand exactly how that cable is wound up on the drive spool. So once you've done that, then the process becomes fairly simple. Then you're back down at the bottom retensioning your cable, making sure there again that the kick out is in place when you're doing your tensioning. So with that, we're going to move into some of the other issues with the actual drive assembly itself. So we've covered cables uh, fairly extensively. So now what we need to do is move into the actual drive mechanism itself. These, will, these particular doors within the green hangers have a top drive system, which is opposite of some of the Wilson doors that actually have the drive system down at the bottom. Nonetheless, we'll go into what these drive systems actually look like in the green hangers. There's basically three parts to that system. One is the large drum to which the cables are attached which also has a tooth system that engages with a large chain to a transmission. From the transmission there's a large pulley with a rubber belt that goes to the smaller pulley on the electric motor. So there's basically three components that you're dealing with on the drive mechanism itself. The drum, the electric motor, and the transmission. All of these need to be checked on periodic inspection or if something's going wrong be able to understand what it is that these systems each individual system actually does. So the first thing you're going to look at there again is the drum. The drum is actually held in place on pillow block bearings, some of which have uh, zerk fittings or grease fittings if you will on them where you can actually grease the bearings. Some of them use a sealed bearing so you can't really do anything as far as lubricating the bearings on that particular type of spool. From there you go into the chain that actually comes off of the chain cog on the drum which goes to the transmission. The transmission is a sealed system itself with a oil plug which we'll talk about here in a minute and then from there the drive shaft comes out and goes to the large pulley and then the large pulley is connected to the electric motor via the rubber belt. These are all things that we're going to talk about and we're going to check. So backing up a little bit, checking on the spool, there's really not a whole lot to, I mean you're looking for any ab abnormal wear from the cables, you're looking to see if the cables are have been actually tracking properly. They're not stacking over on top of each other. The other thing is, is, is then you go back and you're looking at the chain. You'll find that there again, since it's hot, dry summers, a lot of these chains, the lubricant just dries up in them. So the chains become very dry and brittle uh, and they definitely need to be lubricated. If they actually, the links themselves have become so rusted that they don't flex like they should, then that chain needs to be replaced. The other key issue with looking at the chains is in the keeper ring. The ring that actually joins the two ends of the chains together and then there's a little slip uh, clip that actually holds that in place and locks in place. It's very important to check that when you're watching and you're actually lubricating that chain, which that can actually be done if there's two people. You can actually have one person start the system, the door going up from the bottom while you're on a hoist or preferably a hoist, not a ladder and you're actually spraying lubricant on that chain and you're watching it come around and make sure that that chain is flexing properly. That's about all you're really looking for on the chain. So now you get into from the actual chain drive you get into the large pulley and the small pulley on the electric motor and the item that it, it, those are two are attached is the rubber pulley belt itself. These seem to go bad uh, in a big way as well because they're again we're dealing with hot dry environment and they sit in, in many cases, they don't get a lot of use. So what they do is they dry rot and then they start to split and come apart. And when one of these belts actually fails, it's not a good thing because it's one of the systems that is part of your brake as your door is coming down. 
So if you eliminate that out of your system and the brake on your electric motor now has no function whatsoever, that door in some cases can actually freewheel all the way to the bottom. I have seen that and it's not a good thing to see. And you certainly don't want to be underneath one of those one ton doors when this is happening. So from there, the next thing that you're going to be looking at is on the back of that transmission, there's a little square plug. And what you're doing there is you take that square plug slowly, taking it out. If the oil level within there is a proper level, oil will start dripping out of the actual hole that you've just taken the plug out. That's an indication that the oil level is good. If the oil level is not good, in other words, it's dried out or it's leaked out, whichever the case may be, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put oil back in through that same hole. And usually what we use is a, is a 30 weight gear oil and that's what you're going to put back in there. There again, you put enough oil in there so it starts to drain back out. Put the plug in, tighten it up, you should be good to go. There again, you're looking for anything that looks abnormal up there, any kind of abnormal wear, uh, things that, um, for example, if we will touch on how do you tighten, let's just say the belt is loose on that drive mechanism. And when I say the belt, I'm talking about the rubber belt, not the chain. If that is loose, what will happen is when you start to raise your door, it'll start slipping. And you'll be able to tell that it's slipping because it's making noise and the door is not going up properly. So that's an indication that one of two things, the belt is either worn out or the belt is just simply not tensioned properly and it's, sli and it's slipping. Now the way that we, if the belt is in good condition, the way that we actually retighten the belt is you have to, there again, you're either on a hoist or a ladder and the door is down in the down position. And what you do is you unloosen the bolts that's actually on the electric motor mount itself. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to, it takes a, a tool that you can wedge in there and push the motor back until you get the proper tension on your rubber belt. The proper tension on that rubber belt should be approximately one quarter of an inch deflection. So if you laid a ruler across the two pulleys and you push down, the mo usually the most amount that you should get is about a quarter of an inch. Then you know that your tension is right on that belt. And usually that solves the problem uh, with a, you know, a belt that's actually slipping. In conjunction with that, that's another thing you do is when the belt is actually going around and you're up there on your ladder, somebody else is operating the switch, is to actually dress the belt with what exactly what it's called, belt dressing spray. Spray that, it, it helps uh, prevent the belt from you know, actually doing all the dry rot that you're going to see on a lot of these belts. One of the items within the actual drive mechanism, which we've been talking about today, didn't uh, uh, address, was the actual box. It's a little small aluminum box, about so thick and about that square. And there's a drive shaft that comes out of that that goes to the transmission. There's a little coupler in between, a little flex coupler. What that box is, that box is the device that determines where your door stops, either up or down. And it's done by a little timing clock that's within it. Now it's important that if you're going to be messing with this that you get an electrician to do actual work on the box itself because there's 240 volts that operate this system. So you yourself should be at the bottom on the switch. So you always do it with two people and maybe you do it with two electricians and while you're standing there watching determining where you want the door. So what they'll do is you'll actually put these pins in place for let's say a stop for the up and a stop for the bottom. And it's a trial and error sort of thing. So you'll run the door up and if it doesn't stop where you want it, then you st stop, lower the door back down, and you start over. So you, it, it, like I said, it is a trial and error system where you're gonna pin it and maybe that's not quite where you want it. So then you lower the door back down, replace the pin, raise the door back up. And you get it to the point where you want your door to stop, then you're good to go, put the plate back on, and your stop system has worked. Now one of the things I have run into in the past on, on different doors where that mechanism is actual a cog, what's called an acme thread that goes back and forth like such and those things they're made out of brass and they will actually strip and destroy themselves of which I'll show you a picture of within this video. But nonetheless, uh, don't mess with the stop switch itself. In other words, the stop switch that is actually on the drive assembly. Leave that to the electricians. You're gonna be there when it happens so that you can design the stop as to where you want the door to be. So like I said, with that, don't be opening up the box, have an electrician do that, that's not your job. Unless, they're, again, you're a certified electrician. Okay, so now we're back down from the drive assembly itself and we're on the ground floor. 
The next thing we're going to deal with is pulleys. And when I'm talking about pulleys, I'm talking about the pulleys uh, where the, uh, the cables are actually running through before they come back down to the base of the door. So usually these pulleys don't create a major issue unless one of two things. First one is these pulleys are making a lot of noise. If a pulley is making noise, the bearings worn out. All right? And the only way that you can replace uh, one of these pulleys is there again, you have to go down with the door down, you have to go down, unattach the cable of the affected pulley and release it so there's no tension on the pulley. Then you climb back up, it's a single bolt that actually goes through the pulley, you take the pulley out, put a new pulley in, tighten the hole works up, make sure that the, the cable is back inside the pulley itself, back down on the ground and then you retension that cable. Usually, as I say, if they're making noise, or the second thing is if they're actually wobbling. You can see uh, a bad pulley as, as the door is actually coming up. If it's bad and the bearing's worn out, it'll actually move like this. That's another sign that that pulley needs to be replaced. The only other round moving things that you're going to be looking at is on the outside of the doors. Uh, I'm not sure what the proper term is for these, but you will see two little small wheels on the outside of the door that are attached to the door. And they travel up the beam, the major support beam for these doors. And that's their purpose. They actually allow, instead of the door just dragging metal on metal, you have little round wheels that roll on the major support beams of the, of the hanger itself for the door. The only thing that you can really do on those is, some of them have zerk fittings, the majority of them don't. And a lot of those are worn out. Uh, and to replace them, some in some cases to replace them, it requires some actual welding of the door. But most of those, uh, as I say, if they have zerk fittings, go ahead and grease the zerk fitting. If they don't have a zerk fitting, they're again using a nice quality uh, lubricant spray. Spray within there and then every once in a while, initially I'll spray that beam so that they're rolling up and they're picking some of that up. Um, the, I'm trying to think of any other wheels. Uh, that covers just about most of the rolling wheels, if you will. The next thing, uh, which is of great importance, is the condition of the actual door latches. I've gone in the first video that I did for safety video for the owners or renters of these hangers. It explains what a good door latch actually looks like and how to properly use these door latches, which is absolutely critical, because if they're used the wrong way, you can create a lot of damage and possibly do some serious injury. So I advise watching that video uh, in addition to the one that we're doing right here. With that, there's uh, not a whole lot more that I can talk about, but if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to email me. Uh, my email address is n606xe at gmail.com. So November 606 X-ray Echo at gmail.com. Uh, I'm not an expert, but I have spent six to seven years uh, working on these doors and uh, have learned uh, some of the tricks of the trade as to how to make the job just a little bit easier, whether I'm doing it or somebody else is doing it. But the door safety cannot emphasize uh, the safety of these doors enough because when these doors do come down and they come down in a wrong fashion, they can do substantial damage and substantial injury. So, as I said, this is not meant to be a all-encompassing video as to hanger maintenance uh, or door maintenance, but it should give you a good insight to be able to hire someone else, uh, if need be, I'm not here, to be able to do this type of maintenance. Uh, it's not rocket science, but it is things that you need to pay attention to. So with that, I thank you for watching the video and uh, I hope your door stays safe and you stay safe uh, and it operates in a proper manner. Once again, thank you for watching and have a good flight.